okay, whenever we're looking at these problems where they're choosing committees or have, I don't know, 52 cards in a deck and you're choosing five of them, um, there's two different formulas, permutations and combinations. Combinations is when order doesn't matter and permutations when order does matter. So examples like if we pick a hiring committee of five people from 10 people. So the order you're picked in doesn't matter. If you're on the committee, you're on the committee. But let's say if we were choosing a president, vice president, and treasurer for an organization, then the order you get picked in matters because that makes a difference whether or not you're the treasurer or the vice president or um, the president of the organization. So the end result, does the order matter? So when I'm reading this question about a baseball team, there's 24 players and 13 of them are considered active. And then it says, how many ways are there for the manager to select 13 active players from the lineup? So if you're on the lineup, you're on the lineup, right? So it doesn't matter what order you pick the 13 in, it would still be the same 13 people no matter what you do, right? So if you put the 13 people in order, you scramble them up, and they put them in the same order, they're, they're active players, they're active players. So it seems like this is one where order doesn't matter. If order doesn't matter, then we're talking about combinations. And so our formula for combinations is the one with the C is for combinations, P is for permutations. So it looks like we are doing 24, choose 13. So N on the top, so on the top is 24 factorial. And on the bottom is 13. And then this is N minus R, so 24 minus 13 is 11 factorial. And so those two numbers are multiplied by each other. Okay, so one thing I want to do is think about what factorial means. If I put all the numbers from 24 down to 13 on the top, or down to 1, and all the numbers from 13 down to 1 on the bottom, a huge majority of them are going to cancel. And so I'll only be left with 24 up to, what, 14? Everything from 13 down will cancel with this one. And so if I'm going over to my calculator, I don't necessarily need to look for the button for factorial. It does exist, but sometimes it takes longer to get to that than it's really worth. Instead, I want to say to myself, okay, this is 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 15 times 14. And now everything from 13 down is going to cancel with this one here on the bottom. Oops. And so I don't need to put anything lower than 13. Then on the bottom, everything from 13 down canceled with 13 to 1 on the top. And so then all I'm left with is 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Sometimes you can be a little lazy about typing the times 1 because multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything, right? And so picture what that's saying then is that there are 24. There are just under 2.5 million different ways to pick 13 people from 24. Okay, so then the second part of this question, how many ways can the manager select a nine-player batting lineup? So on this one, it kind of matters where you are in the batting lineup, right? You want to put your, what do you want to put your best person fourth? All my baseball knowledge over here. Um, you want to put your good players in a certain order so that they have a better chance of people before them being on base so they can actually hit them in. So it looks like on a batting lineup, unlike just who's on your roster, it matters what order you put them in which makes it a permutation situation. So for part B, we're doing 20, oh, let's see, how many ways can a manager select from the active roster? So be careful about reading this. You're picking your nine player batting lineup from the active roster, which isn't all 24 people, just the 13 who are actually playing. And so this looks like you have 13 people to pick from and you're choosing nine. So we have 13 factorial over 13 minus 9 factorial, so 4 factorial. And so picture on the top, you're going to have all the numbers from 13 all the way down to 1. 
and then here you'll have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And like I said, sometimes you can be lazy about the times 1 because multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything. So then if I wanted to go type it in the calculator, and I'm just hitting this green button to get this F1 to make it a fraction, you can do the top and bottom in parentheses, but I just like this because it looks like a fraction, so it's easier. So we have all the numbers from 13 on down. And so why am I stopping at 5? Well, everything from 4, 3, 2, 1 is going to cancel with the bottom of this fraction, right? So there won't be a bottom at all. And in fact, just to point out that you get the same number, I'll show you where the factorial button is here. So 13 factorial over 4 factorial. So 13, I hit this button that says math, and go over to probability, and there's the exclamation point. So 13 factorial over 4. Go over, pick the exclamation point. See how we got the same number? Whether or not we typed in what was left after canceling without having to find that, or you can go find that button. So it looks like when order does matter, Twenty-five, nine, four, five, nine, two, zero, zero. There are more like 259,459,200 different ways to pick nine people out of 13.